It has been said that the great achievement of Satan in the modern world is to get people to think that he does not exist. And that is indeed true. Even if people do believe he exists, they don't believe he's involved in people's lives or things of this sort. A lot of people don't even believe that hell exists. This is done. So Satan has pulled this off. This, he did this to, in order to infiltrate this, a, the various areas of human lives that in the past he would have simply been booted out. But this is something that is, it's done in order to hide so that they can spread, uh, spread their influence. This is why demons do it. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless it. Hi, thanks for tuning in to Armor of God. As always, let me start the video by saying thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us, and hopefully you'll be edified with what we've put together here for you. My apology in advance, but this is going to be another video about understanding how the demons attack us in our daily lives, and in continuation from previous videos, I'd like to share several more things from Father Chad Ripperger with all of you. And if it's not too much of a hassle for you, please share this video on your social media to help spread the message around because in a world where it is becoming increasingly pagan, I hope we can do our tiny parts in countering the pagan information out there with the truth. Anyway, now buckle up and let's get right on it. As we know, the devil is the father of lies. And guess what? He is not only lying to us, but also to the other demons. Christ labeled Satan as the father of lies. And he made observation that he was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. The fact that he is the father of lies tells you something. When the demons were created, they were actually created in a state of innocence. They were angels created in a state of innocence with sanctifying grace. They were actually pleasing to God in their first instance. And in that first instance, they were given a knowledge of who they are, who God was, what God was asking them as to their divinely assigned task, etc. The second instance, they made a choice whether they were going to follow that or not. And then St. Thomas Aquinas says, in their third instance, they were then either damned or rewarded. So there was, it was all very quick. And that's why when Satan made his decision in the second instance of his existence, he made a decision not to follow the will of God. And he chose a lie. And he basically lied also to the other demons about what he would promise them and things of that sort. That second instance, he, the fact is his will became fixed. All angels, their wills became fixed either in the good in choosing to do God's will or in falsity in choosing not to do God's will and so or in evil in choosing not to do God's will. As a result of that, Satan became the father of lies insofar as demons chronically lie. He lies. In fact, one of the lines that my father once said to me, he said, look, there's certain people that will lie even when the truth sounds better. And this is a perfect description of demons. They lie even when the truth sounds better. You'd see this even in session. They will chronically lie even when it would go better for them. Their suffering would be less if they simply told the truth. They still lie anyway. And it's because of the fact that their wills are fixed in the falsehood. And the only time they really tell the truth is if they can gain something from it or if they're under duress, that is, being punished by an exorcist or God in order to force to tell the truth. So their wills are fixed in, e in evil. That doesn't mean that they don't know the truth. They know the truth intellectually because their intellects can't be in error because their knowledge is infused by God. Unlike human beings, we receive all our knowledge through our senses and derive conceptual knowledge through experience and things of that sort. They don't go through that. It was all infused in the beginning. So they know the truth, but they cannot but lie because their will is now fixed in falsity. Some of it is for the sake of manipulation and control. A lot of times they just lie because they're trying to manipulate and control you. But this tells you, therefore, that when they don't tell you the truth, I kind of mentioned this a little bit in the last video. Once we know the truth about something, then we're free to make a full choice in relationship to it. If we don't, we're basically being held bondage by whoever is telling us the lie. This is why Christ said the truth will set us free. You actually even see that in some cases of possession where the possession is light. Once the person comes to knowledge of 
the, the truth about a particular thing that the demon was lying to them about or putting false images in their imagination, once they come to the truth, the, the demon's power over them is broken. And so as a result of that, their slavery to the demon is broken as well in that regard. I have had my own fair share of obsessing over sinful things in my own life, and that's why I've been sharing quite a number of clips on demonic obsession for the past few weeks because by listening to them, it has been really helpful for me and I hope it's helpful for you too. I'm not sure whether what I've been experiencing is demonic obsession, but by listening to Father Ripperger here really helps me to understand a little bit more though. One of the mechanisms that you actually see in relationship to diabolic influence is what's called diabolic obsession. And in diabolic obsession, the attack is greater than it is in temptation. It's much stronger and it's very consistent. This should not be uh, confused with uh, psychological obsession because there is a legitimate form of psychological obsession, which is essentially consists in a set of bad mental habits um, in which the habits have become so strong that the person has, loses a great deal of control over their own thought process. But demons can actually obsess people. And if you get the demons out of the person's hair, then the person can actually think clearly and not obsess about the particular things that the demons are trying to do it. But in the obsession, the demons are trying to control the thoughts of the individual by constantly putting images in the person's imagination, by it being constant. And also the emotional manipulation becomes constant, where there's this constant reminder of what he wants you to think about, how he wants you to look at it. And the goal is to gain greater and greater control over you. As many exorcists say, the, they usually start out with diabolical oppression, where they attack people from the outside, so that the person starts just naturally obsessing about it, and then that opens the door because we shouldn't be obsessing about these things. We should just have trust in God. And so that disordered obsessing about the thing then opens the door to the demons driving the obsession. And then eventually as we, the, the person's thinking patterns become so imbued with diabolic influence that they end up uh, being suggested by the demons. The demons suggest something that the person does, which then is opens up the door to, once the person does it, opens up the door to possession. That's their goal, is possession. Okay, so there's this constant reminders. The battle is incessant. You can't seem to get away from it. Some of you have commented on my previous videos, pointing out that these exorcists are saying different things about certain subjects. There seems to be conflicting information being shared by these priests, but that's the whole point. Demons want us to be confused by them. For example, in my previous video, they want us to think they are stronger than they really are. Demons hide or obfuscate. That is, they hide so that you can't see them, or they obfuscate, that is, they confuse things so that it's hard to discern what's them and what's not them. And this is all done in order to deceive, so that you don't really know who they are. In other words, it's shifting around all the time, so that it's hard to determine what's them and what's not them. It's, they shift tactics all the time, too, in order to engage in the warfare so that it's hard to combat them because they're constantly shifting around and changing. Granted, the demons are phenomenally consistent, but to human beings, they seem almost random, or it's hard to know what's them and what's not them. Historically, it is been said by many theologians that the demons take the same old errors that they purport that they pushed in the early church and things like that and they call them something new and then propagate them all over again we're seeing that in spades especially in the church but we also see that even in the political sphere you're starting to see that more and more do you know why demons keep on lying and never ask for forgiveness to anyone who is only starting to hear exorcists sharing these things as I've often observed in some of the random comments written on this channel, they often wonder why can't these fallen angels simply just swallow their pride and ask for forgiveness from God. Wouldn't that be better? When an exorcist does sessions in which exorcisms are done to compel the demons to give information in order to arrive at what is necessary in order to get them out, one of the things that the exorcist will observe is that when demons are caught in a lie or a crime of some sort, instead of humbly apologizing and asking for forgiveness, they spin the, they make some type of excuse, they spin the, they spin what is understood as 
the truth of the matter, to make themselves look good. They never admit fault. They blame others. Um, they very often will blame the possessed person or innocent people, etc. They create a diversion to mitigate the damage, you name it. Everything is done in order to deflect the blame and the culpability. Part of this is because of the demons, the fact that demons have no humility. Because their sin was rooted in pride, ultimately. And so they will never apologize or ask for forgiveness except under great duress in session. And even then, they won't mean it. They'll just go through the motions of it. They're, they label stuff so that it makes it look not as bad as it is, or it makes it look good when in point, in fact, it's actually bad for people. They will create false flags as part of their modus operandi, is they don't let any crisis go to waste. Demons will create a crisis and then blame the possessed. It's all done to gain control over the individual. As in the cases of demons, it is ultimately done just to mitigate any possible loss of power that they might have by being seen as culpable for something that they have done which is wrong. We see this also in relationship to not just individuals, that is the power that the demons have over individuals, but even over societies or nations, that demons will do the same thing. Well, that is all for the video this time. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. I hope all of you have learned a lot from Father Chad Ripperger here, and I try to minimize my own personal input whenever I can so I don't dilute what he's saying with mine. If there's any suggestion or feedback, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comments below. Anyway, for those of you who'd like to support our works, I left a link to our PayPal donation in the description box below. And from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much in advance for your continuous support, contribution, and prayer. And just one last thing from me. If you have the time, please do visit our Christian Sisters YouTube channel, Julia here. She's not a Catholic, but as I've always said in the past, I love that the community here on this channel is not only Catholics, but a lot of Protestants, Orthodox, and even atheists as well. Just remember that at the end of the day, the devil is targeting all of us. He wants us to join his eternal damnation, and that's what driving me to keep on sharing the messages of these priests with all of you. Well then, until the next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and let's pray for all the victims of war, especially for the Ukrainians, Russians, the people of Israel, Palestinians, and even the people in Afghanistan who recently experienced a devastating earthquake in the Herat province. May God bless you and protect all of you.